Hi guys, I'm Ariel, and today I'm going to show you guys how to make butternut squash gnocchi with fennel. It's a pretty good fall dish, and although the ingredient list isn't that long, uh, it does take quite some effort to make. So the first order of business is getting the actual butternut squash into a puree, so we can put it into our dough. So first things first, we're going to toast our spices. I have our nutmeg and our cinnamon. Now the reason we use uh, whole spices rather than ground is because the ground spices burn much, much easier. So this is just easier for us to work with using the whole spices. So now our spices are toasted and we can add our butter. You can let this melt on a low heat because you don't want this to burn, especially before you put the butternut squash in. So our butter is melted and we have our squash here. I'm just gonna season it with a little bit of salt. And you can raise the heat to about a uh, low medium heat and just let that go and baste it. So this takes about 45 minutes, depending on how high you're cooking the squash on. But you're just going to want to stick by this and continuously baste it until it's finally cooked and brown. So we're about halfway through with our butternut squash. And a sign that you're doing something right is when the butter is just as much foam as it is liquid. And if you consider foam liquid, then I guess in that case you win. Um, just a tip before we actually finish. Uh, with spices, if you're basting, you should leave them in the back just to like, sort of continue to toast. Um, whereas if you had like herbs or garlic, something like that, you would leave it over here where the butter is so it can continue cooking and releasing flavor. It also helps that it's not in the way when you're actually basting whatever you're basting. So it's been about 45 minutes and our squash is cooked. You can tell, you can squeeze it a little bit, it's all softer and it's significantly browner. So you can turn this off, and you can puree this. All right, so we're about ready to start mixing our dough. Um, you can see the puree for the squash is quite dark. This is from the bottom of the squash that we didn't turn over. So this is probably about as dark as you want to go. Any darker than this, and it'll be a little bit bitter. Uh, if that is the case, you could just add a little bit of sugar, just to sweeten it up and just balance it out. So first things first, we're gonna put our one cup of puree into our bowl. And what I do from here is I sort of smooth it out towards the edges of the bowl just so when we put the flour in, it just minimizes clumps. Alright, so once that's done, you can start adding your flour about a half cup at a time. It's alright if it's not exact because to be honest, the final product is just up to you on how comfortable you feel the dough is. Alright, so once you've added about a cup, uh, you just want to fold it in and start mixing this together and try to sort of press it against the side of the bowl to form a paste more than like uh, clumps. So once you've mixed in the one cup of flour, this should be uh, firm enough to put out onto your counter and start kneading it. So you just want to make sure you have a clean dry surface so when you add the flour nothing sticks. Up, we have Jordan Rakai, it's called My Time. Remember, do what you love at all times. And just very steadily start to add flour little by little. It's gonna be really, really soft. You're gonna feel when it's about ready, uh, when it's a little firm and when you push in, it doesn't really stick. So at this point, I've worked in about an extra half a cup of flour. Uh, the dough is a little bit more uh, workable. So I just cleaned my hands just so I could get a better idea of where I'm going with the dough. I just had a lot of uh, squash stuck to my hands, the puree. So from here, I can sort of show you my technique a little more clearly. So you've got the dough covered with flour, and what I do to knead it is I sort of just alternate between hands. So I sort of squeeze and pull it, and you just add flour as you knead it. So to the surface and to your hands, and to dough as well. And you just find a good motion and you just go back and forth. So now our dough is about ready. You can see it absorbed pretty much all the flour on the surface. So this is pretty much almost exactly uh, one cup of the puree and two cups of flour. 
So you can see that as you press in, it doesn't really pull off any pieces of the dough. It is still quite sticky, but you don't want this to be too firm once you actually cook it. So from here, you can just wrap this up and leave it at room temperature for about 30 minutes. All right, so while our dough is resting, I'm gonna show you guys what to do with the fennel. I have a bulb here, about half of it I've used some already. Um, you're just gonna wanna cut off the fronds from here up. And the bulb, you can save and throw in the pot uh, when you boil the water just to add some flavor. Uh, you can also slice it as if it were onion and toss it in the pan with the gnocchi once it's finished. And if you do that, you could use these to flavor the water. So what we're gonna do from here is we're just gonna save all the fronds. So this is sort of tedious work, but you just sort of remove all the fronds, put them to the side and wash them. So now we have our fronds, our bulb, and our stems separated. Um, just a note about washing this, fennel just like leeks and other uh, vegetables, they have a lot of dirt stuck in between like the layers. So just make sure when you're washing this, you're washing it well and that all the dirt is cleaned up. All right, so we have our dough ready and we're ready to make our gnocchi. Uh, we just have to get this into the shape. So first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna add a little bit more flour. And then just divide this into uh, quarters. So from here you can roll it out. So once it's rolled out, uh, you can cut it and then shape it. Now there's a few options you have with um, with shaping it. You can leave them just like this, like in little pillows. You can do that fancy thing with the fork, or you can just simply roll them with your thumb and leave these little pockets to hold sauce. So I'm gonna show you how to do the thing with the fork. Uh, just make sure your fork has some flour on it pretty easy you just sort of hold the fork like this you put your thumb right where uh, this part is on the fork you put it down with your left hand press down there and you sort of just like roll it over so it leaves the edges here and you have a little uh, pocket for the sauce one more time again edges dip easy So here we have our pot of water simmering. I've had the fennel bulb in there for about 30-40 uh, minutes. I'm gonna remove that. So you could drop in your gnocchi slowly, making sure you're not dropping one on top of the other. And once you get them all in there, just give it one good stir. And then from there you can just let them rise to the top and cook for about another 30 seconds or so. And from there they're done. Alright, so while our gnocchi is working, in a pan off to the side here, it has some olive oil. And on a medium heat, I'm just gonna heat up some garlic. Now the garlic I'm leaving whole because we're not gonna end up eating it. I just wanted to flavor the pan. And in here we're gonna cook the gnocchi once it comes out of the water. All right, so now our gnocchi is almost ready. We're pretty much ready now. Um, I'm gonna strain this. I'm not gonna drop it directly into the pan. If we were making the sauce of some sort of substance, I would drop it in, but uh, you don't want any water in there. You want these to get crispy. So now our garlic is starting to get a little brown. You can add in the gnocchi. Now you're going to let these cook for about a minute. And then you're going to add the fennel fronds. Now the fennel, um, some of them are still sort of in... Uh, their stems a little bit, but
But as they cook, they sort of uh, stiffen up and they break apart. And it might look like you're adding a lot, but you're really not. You need all of it. So now you can see the fronds starting to break apart and they're becoming their own individual strands. Cook this for about another minute and then your gnocchi is ready to eat.